Hi, this is going to be a breakdown of my Unreal Engine 4 implementation project, Deep Elder Caves. First, I have to thank Alexander Saichov for making the project in the first place and putting it on the Unreal Asset Store, because I didn't make the actual environment, I just implemented the sounds. Click the link in the description if you want to watch just a showcase of these systems in the game. So first, the setup. Since this project was just a blank environment with no player character or anything, the first thing I did here was spend time importing assets like this mesh, assigning it animations and tying those animations to the movement, as well as attaching a camera to the character and teaching Unreal Engine which buttons actually move the character here in the project settings. To let the engine know when the character's foot is actually touching the floor, I put tags in the animation that I just labelled footfall that I can reference in the animation blueprint. In this blueprint, I have a system that's casting a line trace from the character every time the footfall tag happens, that detects the surface the player is standing on and plays a different sound cue for each one. I've manually tagged each part of the floor with my own custom physics materials that match the footstep sounds that I made, and since the skeletons are a little too small for the line trace to reliably catch, I actually made these invisible cubes that just have their physics material but no real collision so that the sound matches when you step on bones. The sound cues for the footsteps themselves just contain six different sounds for each surface that are chosen randomly with some pitch and volume variation. The ambient zones here are pretty simple, I just set the ambient emitters to cover this large area and make sure that the outer layers of their attenuation spheres overlap so that the player is never in a silent space. I wanted the tight corridors to feel a bit more claustrophobic and dark. and the more open areas to feel more alive and bright. I'm also simulating a kind of cave entrance here at the start with some more general forest ambience coming out of this opening. The spot effects emitters here include these lanterns, where I attach the sound cue to the shared asset folder that they all have, so I don't have to manually place an emitter on each one, and they're automatically generated when the level starts. As well as having a few different loops to choose for each lantern, I have a very slight random delay for each, so even if two spawn next to each other with the same loop, one will start slightly later than the other, and they shouldn't loop at the same time. These other emitters for the animal calls are different in each room, just so they sound a bit different, even if it isn't super realistic. They have just a few different one-shots that are played back looping with a random delay before each loop, so the time in between them playing back changes every time. That's the same with these vine swaying sounds here that I've just placed around clusters of hanging vines. So when you enter the two main big spaces, I have trigger boxes that play a sound when the player first enters them to make it more seem like a new space and like they've achieved something. The one for this big mushroom room is a bird because it has this big opening in the sky where I just have this invisible sphere as a component of the trigger box and it plays the sound attached to the sphere once it's triggered. I also have this node in the blueprint that makes sure this can only happen once so the player can't accidentally trigger it over and over again. For the animated part, I have this exact same system leading into the main kind of room with the flower, but there's an extra section in this blueprint that moves this sphere along the y-axis as the sound is playing over around two seconds to simulate you disturbing some bats and having them fly out past you. So they have Doppler and attenuation air absorption to give the impression that they're really moving as it plays, because the high frequencies will drop as it moves. For demonstration purposes, I'm going to show it, but I've made the sphere visible so you can see what it's doing. <laughs> To get the constant water dripping effect, I have this blueprint that basically takes a random x and y value, translates that to a position around the player, and plays this drip sound cue attached to that location. Then it does the whole thing again after a randomized delay time in another location around the player. The sound cue for these drips is another random selection of sounds with slight pitch and volume modulation to prevent it from getting too stale. The result is this feeling that you're walking past these drips from the ceiling happening around you, even though they're only playing at your current location so they can be effectively randomly panned. Here it is with the rate increased so that you can hear more clearly what's happening. Thanks for watching and thanks again to Alexander Saichov for making such an interesting environment for me to design around.